I guess some people are born writers. I wasn't. I was born a reader. Um, and I read everything all the time. It's most of what I did with my life until I was about 12 years old. And as far as I can remember. I mean, occasionally I played dress up, but mostly I would dress up and go read. My grandmother taught me to read when I was three. This is my mother's mother, and we, they had an attic in their house, and she had this old chest. And there were all these various children's books that she kept in the chest, so she would take me upstairs, and uh, basically she, when she was looking after me, because both my parents worked, she would read me stories and teach me how to read those stories for myself. I grew up in a house where no one in my family, um, there were no other writers, but everyone was a, a voracious reader. And I grew up in a house filled with books and people always talking about books and, you know, with two older sisters who read um, much more than I do and a mother who reads incessantly and a father who does. And, and, uh, and so it always seemed like a wonderful thing. Reading and the idea of what reading does is, has particular resonance because of what my father taught me. I had a, I was the weirdo at school, so, um, and it was an alternative school where everyone's weird, and to be the weirdo in that school was like a crazy thing. And I didn't, you know, in school, it's a big deal to have somebody to eat lunch with. And I remember that I would come home and I would say to my mom and dad, I, I don't know who to eat with because nobody wants to sit with me. And I didn't know what to do. And my dad said, you know what you should do? Go sit on a park bench and take a book and go read. And you won't feel, you won't feel alone anymore. And he was right. I think when you read a great book and, or a poem or you read lyrics to a song, and it really it has the power to make you feel less lonely. So that's what reading did for me. I am only happy when I have a book in my hands, almost. Um, and there is no more, to me, um, rewarding moment than when, you, when you're on a bus or a plane or something, you see another person who's reading a book, and it's a real book, and you have this feeling, ah, oh, there's two of us in the world. Reading is, is, is probably the thing I enjoy the most. And whenever I plan vacations, I, I, I try to go to places where I think there will be nice places to read. I tend to be drawn to cafe cities because I have visions of myself sitting in cafes reading. Um, and uh, uh, I always travel with you know 14 books just in case I don't like the, the one that I happen to be reading at the moment. So basically I'm, let me see, vegetarian, don't drink, don't smoke. I live a <laughs> very clean and boring life. Um, I think the only, the only thing, again, it comes right back to reading. I think the only times when I felt even vaguely intoxicated is when I'm reading something that kind of just makes me jump up and just kind of go, oh, my God, and just, like, walk around the room and, and just kind of blood crashing through veins, like, in this, in this really crazy way. Um, and that's, that's all brain, really. So just, it's just kind of brain, brain drugs, if that makes me sense at all, um, in a much more direct way than, than kind of alcohol and, and stuff. One thing about becoming a writer, and, and certainly becoming a writer a little later in, in life, I, I guess I was 31 or something when I started becoming a professional writer, you become a very active reader. I mean, I, I no longer read without a pen, and reading to some degree becomes work. I think it's saddening in a certain way because, you know, often I think back to the experiences that I had reading fairy tales that I picked out from the library or just random books and just being utterly transported, being, you know, having a complete immersion um, a complete transportation in that world. And nowadays I feel as though I don't really get that that often anymore. You know, I feel as though part of that is our sense of what being more adult or more mature means. You know, we, we tend to think that the adult emotions are the ones that are subtler, that are sort of complex, that are contradictory, that have, you know, various contingencies built into them. Whereas often I think, hang on, maybe when you were a kid, that was what, that was what being human was really like, you know, to really feel the fear and the love and the loss and the grief, all of those emotions just cleanly, you know, and, and without adulterant. And so I, 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 I like to think that, um, that it's still possible to get that experience, but maybe it's more possible to give it to other people and maybe that's the most worthwhile thing because I can't read something now without thinking, if I love it, without thinking in some corner of my brain, how did, 
he or she do this, you know, and that, that screws up your reading a bit. I'm not a person who sits and reads a book and, and says, oh, now how did they do that? And how can I take that into what I'm doing? Um, I think a lot of that for me is subconscious. I think I'm constantly stealing from other writers who I admire. But I, I think for each novel, there's been at least one book that's had a huge influence on how I see the story being shaped or has changed my way of thinking about how a story can be told. If I'm reading an author that inspires, it's a great help. Um, I'm constantly wondering how some of these brilliant authors write certain things and have put me in terms of, of place and time and how they do that with a character. You know, it's all those kind of situations that in, in my discovering how they've done it, it seems to help my own work. I just finished reading a fantastic short novel by Ali Smith called Girl Meets Boy. And all the rules that I'd been steadfastly intoning to my students was, were broken by this woman. She, wrote, she writes pages and pages of talking heads dialogue and it works magnificently and I thought, it was so inspiring to me to look at my own dialogue. My new favorite writer is Roberto Bolaño and I've been reading all this Bolaño and, and I just wrote a piece for Harper's Magazine about uh, the new Bolaño book which is about to come out. And my editor said, have you noticed that your sentences are like 10 times longer than they were? And I realized it was because I'd been reading these long, lyrical Bologna sentences and it had gotten into my work, even into a review. So that's, you know, and, and reading that the new Bologna novel, I thought, oh, it's possible to do all these things that I hadn't thought were possible before. I think that's what reading is fundamentally about. It is about learning, it's about knowledge. So I wanna learn as much as I can and I, I enjoy you know, reading books that will help me uh, write the best book that I can. For me, writing is doing it. You work on your craft by, by crafting. You work by working. Uh, you get better by doing it. Every time you write, you confront a problem and you have to find a way to solve it. Much of the way you learn to solve problems is by reading. Um, uh, you see how other writers have solved those problems and, and you learn uh, from that.